Good morning. Hey, hey Chris, how you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you? I guess it's still still is morning. And yeah, our, our time right now. Well, yeah. If you're not listening to this during the morning, just yeah. pretend. Yeah, just pretend. Yeah. <laughs> So how are you, Jason? I'm good. I'm Welcome good. to Leading is Serving. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. I always enjoy hanging out with you, so let's catch, catch me yeah. up. What are you up to these days? Oh, what am I up to? Well, currently, I am waiting on your air conditioning guy to come and uh, fix my house. Oh, yes. It's like a little rainforest in my house this weekend. Really? Oh, man. <laughs> of course, it goes out on the weekend, right? Right. You know? It's um, the best time for it to go out. Oh, good grief. <laughs> yeah. This is the second time this summer, too. It is. Like, it I, is. I do believe I was over there at one point and fixed yes, it. Yes, you did. Yeah, you were the you were the quick fix that one night. That yeah, I know. And like, that was a holiday weekend. That was July fourth weekend. Right. Which, which, and I'm pretty sure my heating and air guy was gone that weekend. Yes, so he was. I was he like, was, yeah, he was. There's no way you're going to get it fixed this weekend. So right. I'll have to come fix it for you. Yeah. So I don't, is it a conspiracy? Maybe. Should we delve into com- conspiracy theories about <laughs> Not today. HVAC only breaks on holiday weekends? <laughs> might be. <laughs> we could do that on another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give that one to Zach. There you go. Zach likes getting into some theories. Yeah. I, saw, I like that. I like that. Right on. So, so yeah, we're. I'm, I'm glad to be in the studio this morning. With some air than, conditioning? It, yeah, because it, it, we had storms last night, and so the humidity in my house this morning was right. off the chart. Mm-hmm. So it was... It was fun. How about you? Uh, um, we're, you we're, our air conditioning is working, thankfully. <laughs> been chilling this However, weekend. However, but the uh, storms <laughs> came in the middle of the night last night, and the dogs were up, and it's like, oh, my goodness, it's hard to sleep when the dogs are messing around and trying to create problems. So, yeah. or trying to, they're uncomfortable, or they're tense because of what's going right. on. It just right. creates this stirring of, oh, everybody's got to be up. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Our our dog was so hot last night. Yeah. There was no movement during the storm. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I needed to give my dog some something just to knock him out. So next time you have storms rolling through, just let the house get up to eighty five. Right there, you go. <laughs> Sounds pleasant, doesn't it? <laughs> then I definitely am not going to be able to sleep. <laughs> and we have a house guest this weekend. Oh, good job! <laughs> Do you time that just yeah, right. Yeah, he's he's staying in the basement where it is still it was uh, still cool, still under seventy five. I'm pretty sure in the basement. Um, <laughs> I, I was like, we're we might all have sleeping bags in the basement before it's over. There you go. We're coming down to visit. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, glad you glad y'all doing well. Man. Yeah, glad you guys yeah. are too. That's what we what we talking about today? I'm listening. Listening. Yeah. Okay, you talk so, and I'm listening. Yeah. Or no. I'm listening and you're talking. We're going to talk about active listening. <laughs> what does that look like? Okay. Because um, you know, a lot of times we ask questions and we get into conversations and we feel like we're listening. Whether mm-hmm. that, I mean. You know, I mean, your classic example is with your spouse, right? Right. <laughs> so, you know, uh, plenty of times to listen and not be listening and not right. be listening well. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even in the workplace, whether that's the water cooler chat mm-hmm. or it's in a very specific meeting, maybe around performance review or goals or, you know, here's where we're headed. Right. And people just kind of tune out. And right. That's just where, I mean, because, you know, our, you know, a million listeners right now. Right. Half of them were already tuned out, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, if you tuned out, uh, pay attention to this next part. <laughs> That's right. All you five million listeners, because right. we just gained four more <laughs> right. in the moment. Um, so this is about active listening. How okay. are we truly... Because you know, one of the tools we've talked about on the podcast, leadership tools, is being more interested in a conversation than being interesting. Okay. So setting aside your desire to be interesting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, you've had those conversations where somebody's like... You know, hey, if uh, you know, I heard you had a great trip to California. How was your How was your vacation? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we had a great time. We went to San Diego, and at that point, they're no longer interested in how your vacation went, right? Because they want to tell you about the time they went to San Diego, right? <laughs> and so, when we set aside our desire to be the most interesting in the conversation, and we truly are fighting for the highest good of others, and we're interested in what they are saying, mm-hmm. then these skills of active listening come into play. Right. Okay. And so this active listening, uh, called an audit, okay. um, you can put a scale of one to 10 on each of the, there's five questions. Okay. You can put a scale of one to 10 on there and just kind of grade, you know, how, how do I do in these five areas mm-hmm. and what do I need to work on? I like this. Okay. So number okay. one, um, do you, are you truly good at taking the time to truly understand mm. that when you ask someone a question, are you really willing to take the time to listen? Right. Because it could be a five-minute conversation or it could be a 30-minute conversation. It's a big difference. Right, right. And some people love 
sharing detail mm -hmm. and other people are very short, sweet to the point. Right. And so knowing that going into that conversation, are you truly willing to sit and listen? Mm -hmm. You know, Hey, how was your weekend? Right. Are you truly wanting to hear about their weekend? Or are you just looking for the, ah, that's good. Right. <laughs> and if you're going to listen, do you stay present in that moment? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for those who are a little more task oriented, mm -hmm. it's harder to stay engaged in a so conversation. True. Of going, well, I got to get such and such done by noon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've, I've done that so many times. I know. I know. And, and there's moments I can stay in the moment, and there's moments I'm just like, okay, I got to go do this. I got to do that. Right. And I'm, I'm bad about this, uh, like assuming or guessing where I think you're headed. Yep. And so that causes me to tune out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 30 seconds later, I'm like, oh, where did they go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My guess was not right. right. So. Uh, so number one, are you truly willing to take the time to understand? Okay. Um, that if you're not willing to take that time, maybe not get in a listening environment. Mm -hmm. Maybe hold that conversation until you truly have the time. Okay. okay. So number two on the audit, how good am I at asking open-ended questions to draw out what others are really trying to say? Hmm. So when you ask the yes, no question, mm -hmm. you just get the one word answer. Right. But if you're asking questions around, you know, tell me about, I want to hear the detail, I want to hear the stories around that, right. then that provides more opportunity for you to truly listen. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, hey, are you going to make the deadline on Friday? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes or no. Right. I mean, if that's all you need and that's all you want, don't ask an open-ended question. <laughs> right. But if you're truly wanting to listen and truly wanting to hear what's going on in their person mm -hmm. or in that person's life, you know, ask an open-ended question. Yeah. You know, hey, tell me about uh, what you got left to make that deadline on Friday. Yep. What are you working on? What are you stuck on? What's winning? You know, mm -hmm. um, asking those open-ended questions and then truly taking the time, like number one, to truly understand where they're mm -hmm. at. So, all right, number three, how good am I at being able to summarize what I think I've heard from someone to check that I've gotten it right? Mm. This, um, this is a good one. Like it's... It, it, just kind of solidifies that you were listening. Yeah. And it's definitely one of those ones I struggle with. Yeah. Cause it's like revisiting everything you just heard. It was like, I don't want to go over it again. <laughs> like, well, and especially if it's a <clears throat> conflict based mm -hmm. where somebody is maybe bringing challenge to you that, you know, yeah, I don't want to hear it. Right. And now I have to summarize it back. Right. No, thank you. So then I have to like at some level admit it that it happened. Like, right. like uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I actually heard about this one initially through like marital counseling type mm -hmm. conflict mediation type right. situations. Yeah. That, um, you know, that's a great way to help. What uh, I hear you're saying is. Right. Right. And you know, if you're sitting there with a husband and wife and one is griping about the other, mm -hmm. then to say, okay, what did they say? Have them, you know, that you have to listen actively. Yeah, you have you to do. pay attention. So, yeah. All right. Number four, how good am I at using body language to communicate interest and attentiveness in conversation? Mm -hmm. How much, I mean, how much does your body language play in? I think it plays into a lot more. You got any than, pet peeves around that? Uh, teenagers. <laughs> Like, <laughs> a little more specific, not the like, teenagers themselves, but no, no, a but mannerism, th their mannerisms, <laughs> like in how their attitude with their body language speaks volumes mm -hmm. of constantly like, sure. Hey, just so you know, your body's screaming this and your words are saying this. And I get that you're frustrated, right? but the attitude that comes with it, it's not going mm -hmm. to go well with mom and dad. <laughs> right. Well, and devices are, are, a big part of body language. Mm -hmm. um, I met someone recently who really is intentional about saying, hey, I've got a handful of texts I need to respond to. Do you mm -hmm. mind if I take two minutes? Really? And then they'll pull the phone out and send the text, and then they put their phone away. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I was like, that's super considerate. Yeah. Um, just saying, hey, I'm not tuning out. Mm -hmm. And if you want to keep talking, that's fine. But if we'd rather pause for two minutes, I... I just don't want it too long to go because they're going to, you know, they're asking, you know, I need to get back. So. Right. It's important. Yeah. 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 It's not like, hey, what do you want for lunch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And has not interrupted the conversation mm. to say that, but has waited for an appropriate lull in the moment. And Right. Yeah. And it's basically asked permission. I'm like, that's cool. That is cool. That is very cool. So. 
that's that's very good listening, and yeah. also adjust, you know adjusting for what's right. currently Respectful coming out. And yeah. saying, I'm interested in you. Um, but there's a couple other things pulling on to my attention. Can I deal with these real quick? So, yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah, but I'm body language in terms of like leaning into a conversation, or yeah, I'm bad about crossing my arms. I'm just comfortable. Yes, crossing my arms. But I think about that every time I cross my arms. Like it's that it's it is comfortable, but I know it's it speaks negative volumes out to other people sometimes. Right. It depends on what your setting is. Right. Probably, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're a pin clicker. <laughs> right. <laughs> in a meeting or, you know, I mean, I'm a highly distractible person. So having a fidget mentality helps mm-hmm. me dial in on something. <laughs> but to somebody else that might communicate, this is the most bored person ever. Right. When I'm loving it, but I'm just dialed in because I don't realize I'm sending my distractive energy through, through something, something else. else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. your body language. That, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's a good one. Um, the last question, fifth one. <clears throat> How good am I at resisting the temptation to jump in and assume I know what the other person is talking about? I think I already talked about that one. Uh, I I'm think, bad about that. I think you just, you did. Let me finish it. that thought for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't even think about that when we were talking about number one. Yeah. <laughs> just assuming this is the direction they're going. Right. And, and then I, checking out. I know I do that to my wife. Plenty. Yeah. I do that. Yeah, just like, oh, I know where you're headed. Mm-hmm. And then I probably end up interrupting and probably end up frustrating her greatly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so five questions, That's scale great. one to 10. Check in, you're probably, see where you're We're at. probably not going to hit a 50, no. you know, score 50. But, um, you know, if you can hit, you know, seven or eight on most of these, this is... Uh, this, you're you're you know, in the right Things bracket. to be conscious of. Yeah, you know? it's and, totally true. Um, I think... I think a good listener mm-hmm. is someone who wins influence in other people's lives. Right. Yeah, I completely agree with that statement. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. When you when you know somebody is truly listening and paying attention to the detail and mm-hmm. asking, you know, like one of the, you know, asking clarifying questions. Of, mm-hmm. What did you mean by such and such? It's funny you should say this because I just talked to somebody yesterday and they were just telling me about their newer job. Mm-hmm. and th- And they were like... I love my new job because I have my upper management coming to me going, Hey, how are you doing? We know that this medical thing is going on for you Mm -hmm. and we want to just check in. And I was like, wow, that's great. And it's in a corporate environment, which is right there. They're, they were a little shocked that that they could get that kind of relational Hmm. conversation going on in a corporate setting and where people cared about them, where they were actually yeah. listening at that level. Listening to their needs beyond the beyond just the, the job. job description. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I was like, wow, that's that's good. Yeah. Like it and honestly, like if you think about it, I think most people want that. Like not everybody. Yeah. But a lot of people do. They're like, I think I would go take a job there. Mm-hmm. Like if I knew they cared. Right. Right. Like if it wasn't just all I mean, it's about the job too, right? But yeah but they care about me as a whole. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, I don't know. I try to do that for my guys too, but I don't know that I always succeed because it's just, we also, I also know we get slammed busy and it's just, it's hard to take that moment sometimes too. Right. Right. So, but there's also meetings every week, you know, that we, we do to try to make sure we're checking in with everybody, seeing Mm -hmm. how everybody's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, there's your five questions. Yep. Active listening audit. Mm-hmm. Well, we should review them real quick, and then we'll introduce our interview. Okay. All right. So the question first one was, are you willing to take the time to truly understand? Mm-hmm. Truly seek understanding, not just, you know, like the fifth one, right. <laughs> jump to assumptions. Um, second question was ap- uh, asking open-ended questions to draw out what other people are truly saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, third one was um, being able to summarize what you've heard, mm-hmm. that you truly listened well enough to repeat what they said, and you captured their meaning. And then number four was uh, the body language. Uh-huh. Am I using body language? Am I conscious of my body language um, in the midst of communication in that conversation? And then the last one was uh, avoiding the temptation to jump in and assume the person where the person is headed right? and uh, what they're talking about. So there's your five questions. Take a moment. Think about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be a, uh, and endeavor to be a better listener. And a better leader. For the people around you. And you'll yep. gain influence in people's lives. That's huge. 100%. So, all right. So... so 
tell us about our yeah. n- new um, interview today. Yeah, we've got uh, uh, probably the youngest entrepreneur coming on the podcast that we've had yet. Really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, his name is Sam Bolin. Okay. And uh, he's actually a, uh, graduated with my son. Okay. Um, and uh, he is uh, the lead or the head brewer at Crossroads Kombucha. All righty. You, are you a kombucha guy? I am. Honestly, I don't know that I have ever tasted kombucha. <laughs> well, I told him, I said, you're dealing with a couple of noobs, so yeah. educate us well. Right, please. Because <laughs> so, this is completely out of my realm. He's got his work cut out for himself. That's, so. <laughs> like, I don't even know what kind of questions <laughs> ask about that stuff. Well, we're going to prep, and then we'll talk to <laughs> Sam. Right. <laughs> So we're really excited to have Sam on the podcast. And, yes, we are, uh, for sure. He's uh, uh, started up a local brewery, and they are distributing multiple flavors mm-hmm. of kombucha. Um, they actually do... Uh, and this is a non-alcoholic drink, right? Uh, tea-based, yes. Okay. And okay. apparently has a fizziness to it. Oh, okay. I did not know that I, either. I, I read a website, so... Oh. I'm excited about this. This is going to be fun. Yeah. So um, we're going to be kombucha experts by the time this is done. Okay. That's awesome. But no, uh, really interested to hear his journey um, in starting this up and uh, kind of where he's headed with it. So yeah, yeah it's cool. uh, apparently taken on pretty well here in the mid uh, West area. So that's exciting. looking forward to this. Yeah. Let's jump so, over and chat with him. All right. We'll see you in just a moment. All right. Well, welcome, Sam Bullen. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty glad to be yeah. here. This is awesome. Just pretty glad. Oh no, I'm I'm real glad. Okay, that was a miss. Fake. <laughs> we're 30 seconds in. Already a misspoke. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. No, <laughs> man. We are so glad you joined us. Yes. Thanks for coming today. Yeah, you bet. And uh, we were we we're talking about this in, in the intro that we think you are the youngest entrepreneur to be on the podcast so far. Yes. I take that with great honor. That you is dude. awesome. And dude, that is awesome. And what we've heard of the journey so far, we're super excited to hear the rest of this. Yeah, so, absolutely. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. I mean, you're um, you're native here on the south side of Indy. Oh, yeah. Right? So oh, yeah. tell us a little bit about this journey. Greenwood, uh, born and raised. Uh, went to Center Grove High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, did a lot of fun stuff growing up. Had a really good upbringing. Uh, going to business, obviously, with my parents. Uh, Barry and Lori, love them to death. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I've really grown with uh, is, is football. I've played football all my life. A lot of life lessons have grown up through football. Um, and I think that's carried over into to entrepreneurial stuff, uh, just life stuff in general. So shout out to Center Grove Football. Shout out to Taylor University Football. There you uh, go. That, that's, that's been a huge part of my life as well, yeah. Yeah, and your dad's been on that part of the journey. Oh, yeah. Very, very mm-hmm. closely, right? Yep, he's coached me all the time growing up. That's, That's right. Awesome. Since like second and third grade, yeah. And you're into coaching now as well? Yes, yes, absolutely. All uh, right. I'm coaching uh, at Center Grove Middle School Central, uh, coaching the defense because uh, I've been a defensive guy all my life, actually. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So what happened after high school? Uh, after high school, I uh, really got into wanting to play football in college. Uh, okay. Coach Moore, uh, head coach, really helped me try to guide me in places to go. Uh, I looked at, uh, looked at a lot of the military stuff. As well, that was actually a huge thing I wanted to do. Uh, looked at looked at Navy, wasn't quite big enough to play football at Navy. <laughs> uh, uh, looked at uh, VMI, Virginia Military Institute, uh, mm-hmm. didn't quite fit there. And then I asked Coach, just said, "Hey, where do you think would be a good spot for me to play ball?" He's like, "You know what? I think you should check out Taylor." Um, <laughs> and I went for a visit, uh, talked to the coaching staff there. Uh, it didn't have all the glitz and glamour uh, like it's going to. They're they're getting a big infusion of, of cash for for building up a new facility. Hmm. Uh, but just there's a lot of really good relationships there that I knew were meant to meant to be made. Uh, obviously, did a lot of self-reflection and praying on that. Uh, and I just told my mom as we were leaving, I think I was like, I think this is where God wants me to be. Uh, hmm. And I, I still hold true to that every day. I think yeah. this tra- Taylor was a great, huge, influential part of my life. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So you played football for five years because mm-hmm. you got the extra year eligibility, yep, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. With COVID, thank you, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> in, in a way. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah but it, that was awesome. I've I've learned a ton of just X's and O's because I, I love playing football, but I love the analytics, hmm. the just the breaking down playbook style of football. It's awesome. Just, just. You know, sometimes it moves people out of their chairs, just how much <laughs> I love football. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching on video, I just hit the uh, wrong pneumatic button. release That's on right. my chair, That's and right. I just sank 10 inches. Okay. 
Sorry uh, to take away from that moment. No, <laughs> I think you added to that moment. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> no, but like I said, yeah, uh, loved football. I, I love football. Uh, I've loved the X's and O's, obviously, and mm-hmm. I love the relationships that I've made. Uh, just recently, I went to. I was a part of my friend's wedding from football that I met. Um, probably week one, obviously week one of football, mm-hmm. and I just knew from that moment. His name was Sam. Uh, his lo- thinks a lot like me, laughs a lot like me, uh, kind of the same style of comedy, and it was awesome. Just clicked instantly. I was That's like, okay, cool. this this gonna be one of my best friends for for a long time, right. yeah. and it's held true. Right. So, That's awesome. So yeah. Okay, so football, so, but what about what about degree? What did, yeah, degree. You know, big big connection to my job right now, <coughs> sport management. Uh, doing nothing That's with right. that. <laughs> doing nothing with sport, man. <laughs> well, I'm sure you learn stuff in the midst of it. Oh, but, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yes. Like, but, I but, yeah, I can stuff. definitely, they don't definitely tie together. So uh, what's... They, they, didn't, they didn't teach fermentation class during, <laughs> <laughs> during sport management. Uh, but, yeah, uh, a lot of great profs along the way. Uh, Amy Stuckey's one for one that always pops out in my mind. She's been one of the best people that I met in college on the, on the professor side. Mm-hmm. Uh, cared about us as individuals, cared about us professionally, always looking out for us uh, in class, making sure we we're learning everything we can. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's tough to find uh, professors like that in the real world, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always nice because, I mean, Taylor's great. It's small, so a lot of really intimate connections uh, mm-hmm. with students and with uh, professors. Uh, so really, really shout out. Thank you to her. That's so cool. take us through the transition because, like, it was shortly after leaving college, right, that yeah. you decided, uh, hey, I'm going to jump in the kombucha yeah, we, business? Yeah, we, we talk about it. Uh, it's quick turnaround, quick turnaround time right. at all times, and this was quick. Uh, I hadn't even uh, finished up school yet, and I got a call from, from Lori saying, hey, you like kombucha? I was like, yeah, yeah, I like kombucha. She's like, what do you think about running your own kombucha brewery? I was like, okay, that's like a totally different question. Right. Uh, yeah, no. It's like <laughs> right, okay. taking a sip yeah. versus. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking a big old gulp, drowning. Brewing it, my you know? head. Right. Yeah. yeah so I, I was like, okay, I need to think about that. I um, was asking around. Uh, she, we were originally uh, interested in having two of us do it. So like me and one of my best friends from college are trying to do it together. Okay. Uh, and looked around, asked a lot of them, said, would you want to partner up, kind of take a, take a risk here? Um, and then they didn't want to do that, which is, I totally get it. Right. Uh, a lot right. of them were like engaged with either already job talks mm-hmm. uh, or trying to start a family, need a more consistent flow of income, which totally get it. Right. Um, I'm, I'm glad that it's really family focused. Um, yeah. Quite honestly. But the, um, what's nice is that me and uh, Lori both have a craft product background. Uh, mm-hmm. So she is the CEO of a company downtown called Brew Logics. Right. Okay. Uh, yep. They focus on the craft beer, craft coffee, craft kombucha world, uh, in terms of like data gathering, helping uh, bars, breweries, and restaurants manage uh, their kegged inventory, stuff like that. Super okay. awesome stuff they're doing. So shout out to Brew Logics. I'm, there you go. I feel like I'm a NASCAR with all the sponsors I got. <laughs> <on my chest. laughs> but I'm, I'm shouting out a lot of people here. Make sure you're following along, everybody. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so I, I my junior year summer uh, of of college, I was doing tons and tons of research, uh, just on trends in the craft world. Uh, what would that be? What kind of beer styles are coming out? What are most popular uh, breweries that are on the rise? Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then one thing I noticed is that kombucha is starting to get a little bit of a following here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's really a shift in market for craft kombucha. Because, unfortunately, you know, it's, it pays to be first, and we're not quite first in terms of big brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's about three or four that have really hit the market hard and are doing a really good job. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the data we've seen is that regional breweries of kombucha breweries have a chance to really boom a little bit, uh, okay. especially toward the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of, just like every trend that happens in the world, starts on the coasts and it comes on into the middle. Right. right. And in California, you can't step 10 feet without running into a new kombucha brewery. Oh, uh, really? Yes. It's wow. It's popping up everywhere. A lot of bars, breweries, and restaurants will have a non-alcoholic alternative on tap uh, for, for patrons to have. Okay. From, for, strictly thinking from a business standpoint, if I can give someone a $5 glass, $6 glass of kombucha, that's them ordering something for me that's not water. That's not free, that I don't just have to give away. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and you, and you right. cater to everybody. Right. Yeah. Uh, research says that probably if you have a group of 10 that are going out, probably about three of them aren't going to be drinking heavily. And then okay. plus you got to have a driver, right? Right. right. Drink responsibly, everybody. Right. Yes. Uh, 
you gotta have someone that can take everybody home at the night, so they can't be can't be pounding alcoholic beverages all night. They gotta have right. something, but they don't want to feel left out. Right. right. So kombucha is a great substitute for that. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I think we need to pause. Okay. Because not the recording, but <laughs> we need to pause your journey for a moment um, because there's a lot of people that are like. Com- huh? Kombucha, what? <laughs> right. And then oh, there's yeah. craft kombucha, what? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you guys are in the fire just like us. Right? Give We're us all a little education that. here. <laughs> tell tell us a little more about what is kombucha. Okay. I mean, it's non-alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Give us the give us the rundown. Okay. Right so kombucha is a fermented product. Okay. Uh, it is a, a sweet tea based uh, product uh, that can be kegged. Uh, bottled, uh, and it's really good for the gut. It's a, it's a probiotic full of great bacteria for your gut. Uh, think of it almost like it as a li- an extra lining for your gut. Uh, a good way to think about it is that there's two brains in your body, right? There's one that's in your head, obviously, for some, some not. Uh, and there's one in your gut. And if they're both on the same wavelength, then your body can be in homeostasis a lot better. Uh, so if, if, you're, if you're fully balanced, uh, you're going to be Really feeling, sitting pretty, feeling pretty good. And this is a non-alcoholic product, Correct. even though there's Correct. a fermenting process. Think going. of it like yogurt. There's okay. Yogurt has is a fermented product. There's trace amounts of alcohol in it, kind of the same wavelength, kind of the same okay. vibe. Okay. So it's a, it's a tea based, mm-hmm. and yep. you guys infuse some fruit flavors, some different. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Flavors to that, right? Mm-hmm. And kombucha is an actual ingredient, right? Correct. So Correct. Tell, where do you, I haven't seen that growing here in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> It's not on the tree. It's not. It's not at the apple orchard. It's, it's right. Somewhere. I right. walked through Meyer. Right. <laughs> it, kombucha starter fluid anywhere. No. Right. Uh, no. So it's it starts off as what we call a starter. Um, so it's a really concentrated uh, kombucha that uh, companies will sell to you. So uh, we got. Uh, we're trying to start a, a new uh, base kombucha. We got one from a company called White Labs out of California, uh, and they they give off really good starter fluid. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a great way to, to grow your kombucha and start and pitch it small and then go up big. Uh, <coughs> and, and the word for pitch, pitching means is that um, you, like you start with a small amount of kombucha. A lot of kombucha start at like five gallons, three gallons, something small. Okay. okay. And you have to grow them and multiply them by two, basically. So if I have five gallons of kombucha, it'll be like maybe a liter of kombucha and then four and a half gallons of sweet tea. Uh, and then once that ferments, like the numbers we were talking about earlier off the podcast, we check uh, certain numbers, we track stuff. And once they're in that range of what we're checking, we know, okay, it's fermenting pro- uh, correctly. It tastes really good. Mm-hmm. Now we can do it again. We can pitch it up further than that. Uh, and so it's, you're, always, you're always growing it. Uh, you're always adding liquid to make more liquid, if that makes any okay. sense. Okay, yeah. It's almost like sourdough. A, yeah, it's kind I of have, the same ballpark. Yeah, yes. I have a friend who's like, you, you want a sourdough starter? And I'm like, I have no idea. Do I? Right. Do, do I? You, what? Do I? <laughs> then he talked about what it took to keep it, and I'm like, no. Yes. I'm good. <laughs> there, it's a lot of work to manage yeah. this. That manage does these. sound like a lot of work. Yeah. Like, yeah. So do you spend most of your time trying to brew those batches? Is that a lot? If we didn't have a really good system, I would be. Uh, okay. But we have a really good system. Uh, we have it down to the exact step. Uh, really? Yeah. Of what needs to How be How long does it take you to come up? I mean, because, I mean, as a business owner, mm-hmm. I mean, we've all learned, like, at least I have anyways, maybe not everybody, mm-hmm. but I've, I, in, my, in my learning stages, I have learned that processes are so key. So important. So to every business's success, right? Mm-hmm. So how long did it take you to come up with that process going from... Okay, we have a starter. We got to do this. We got to mm-hmm. do that. You know, like how is that a so time-consuming thing, right? We were blessed because this was a previous company. It was uh, owned and operated in Fort Wayne. Okay, uh, Crossroads Kombucha was a previous LLC. Uh, so we bought the company. We're struggling through COVID, uh, just some problems along the way. No fault of their own. Okay, uh, and we bought it. Said so we love this brand. We can't let it die. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we bought hmm. it up, moved to Franklin, and a lot of the the research and processes had been done for us. Uh, okay, because I mean they were a great. A uh, great brand, great management. Uh, they had everything down to exact science, and we're like, great, hand it on over. We'll <laughs> right? do it just like that. Uh, so yeah. So, so we, a lot of that had been worked out for you. Mm-hmm. Yep, we went. That's awesome. We spent uh, probably a week or two up in Fort Wayne, co- in cumulative time, mm-hmm. uh, going over um, collect cleaning process, uh, correct cleaning processes, brewing processes, bottling processes, fruit prep uh, processes, so that we're all in. in uh, correlation with how it's correctly made so it's it tastes really good mm-hmm. and that it's safe 
Right. Uh, and so we've learned yeah. a ton of stuff like that. And then we said, great, we got it all on camera. We filmed every step of the way. Uh, and then we wrote it down on paper as well. Uh, we've got it. Really? Yeah. So we, we use uh, SharePoint uh, through, through Office 365. Right. And anybody who's an employee there can, can access it. And if they have any questions, they can look at that. And we have the videos there that you can actually see it being done. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. That's a great way to document. And, yeah. I mean, just in case something somebody gets sick. I mean, I guess if somebody got COVID or something, mm-hmm. like right. they couldn't come in that day. Absolutely. You know, what you got to get done. We've had to, we have to call on some people to help us out because a lot of us, we, we have, we really need help when it comes to like bottling and kegging because it is <laughs> a monster of a task. Is mm-hmm. it? Because uh, we hand fill everything. Uh, so like you see those great big canning operations at like Sun King or like Pepsi or like right. whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's not us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't have that. Uh, we just got the four hand crank uh, fillers for our, our glass bottles, and it's it's a grind. Uh, wow. for, the, for the past two days, we were brewing two different uh, brews, Blackberry Mint and Blueberry Sage, uh, 200 gallons worth uh, of bottles and kegs, and it probably took us uh, 10 to 12 hours oh my goodness. just to do it. Yeah. So we, wow, that's wow. intense. We were calling in the, the forces, the backup. We had to, had to call in the old sister. We had to call in Kat to come and help us out. Oh, nice. Yeah. So she looked at me. We were bottling last night. She goes, this brings a whole new term to family owned and operated. Yes. So yes. She's like, that I, is awesome. She's like, I really respect it now. Like, right. Yeah, no crap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keep working. <laughs> Keep working. Keep the head down. That's right. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. Man, you're, you're, you're kind of blowing me away a little bit. because. You're you're five years out of high school. Yeah, that's that's a funny right? way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with a sports management wow. degree. With a sports management degree. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. And and I mean, like, you just you guys just started this. What? So we were almost f- a year ago, just shy of a year. So we're about sitting in about seven eight months. Okay. Uh, of when we took over the, the right, line. and we've been fully operational for about three to four months. Because you said there was like even a process of taking it on as well as mm-hmm. getting your new building up and ready and yeah. getting to the point where you can function in it. The the building part portion was was really tough, but it was also pretty crazy how blessed we were. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we went and looking for different buildings and kind of striking out a few different times. We're like, okay, ceiling, ceiling's too low here, out of our price mm-hmm. range here. And we're like, oh, my goodness, we're stumped. So I said, let's, let's divide and conquer. Me and Lori went home and did a lot of research online. And Barry, being the wheel man he is, was driving around Franklin looking for somebody. Right, right. Little known to us, he drives past uh, this complex, and there's two uh, suites available. And it so happens that the the managers of that suite are the same company that manages Lori's building lease downtown in Indianapolis. Okay. No way. So we already had connections there high up. So we just we picked up the phone and said, hey, we, we're really interested in your spot. We'd love to come visit. And said, yeah, come on down next week. So we visit, walk through, we're like, oh my goodness, this is perfect. 3,300 square feet of just golden area right here. This is awesome. Right. Yeah, and it's split really well. Uh, it's office building in the front, and then we've okay. got a great brewing space in the back. That's awesome. Uh, and it's been a really awesome transition. We've uh, our, our manager of the property is super nice to us. Uh, and actually, the owner of the property will come out and help us uh, if there's any kind of needs we need uh, done. So like elect- mm-hmm. electrical work. Uh, he'll show up on noon on a Friday when most owners are clocking out. Right. And he'll come help us out. So That's awesome. Yeah. It's been sweet. This has been a, that's been a neat process mm-hmm. then for you to go through and learn. It, because there's a lot of transition there. Yeah. I mean, from we were just we, – we did a podcast not too long ago about purchasing a business. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's it's a – there's a lot of work that there's goes behind it. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, because you got to look out, both parties looking out for their best interests. Right. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> negotiations are, it may seem like they're mean or whatnot. Right. But really, it's just looking out for your own best interest. Nothing right. wrong with that at all. Right. So. Right. right. I want to, I want to backtrack to something you, mm-hmm. you're kind of making light of it. Talking about being in NASCAR and having the patches mm-hmm. of everybody that supported you through this. But how important is that role? Oh my goodness. I mean, I, you've mentioned professors to coaches to uh, your parents to, you know, everybody kind of has a different skill set. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about just the support network of, you know, what it's taken to, to get to where you're at today, just yeah. seven months, eight months in. Uh, it's it's really come down to having a great backing of people. You know, it's there's not one person that makes up a great team. There's a lot of people on a team that make us, makes it great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had a lot of help to draw from. So instead of me making these mistakes myself, 
I can ask people and say, hey, you know, or starting out in your business, what what did you mess up with? What are some things you do differently? Right. And I've, we've done our due diligence to ask those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, and it's nice that um, we have those great connections because it's not like me reaching out to someone on Twitter or Instagram like, hey, love you, can you help me out? And I might get a one sense response. Like I'm right. sitting down right. for an hour, hour and a half, having <clears throat> these great conversations with people. Um, and it's been awesome. It's it's really been truly bl a blessing. So what's some That's of the best awesome. uh, advice you've received from someone? Best advice? Uh, okay, childhood friend of mine, uh, Trent Line. <laughs> his dad, Don Line, super great business owner, uh, owned Aqua Systems. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. they just sold. Now they're a big conglomerate. Um, uh, and he told me that numbers are key. You've got to know your numbers backwards and forwards if you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's somewhere where I struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a very, I'm a big vision guy uh, on actually seeing stuff move, parts move. Uh, but when it gets down to nitty gritty, that's where I struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, detail stuff is where I struggle. So okay. it's really opened my eyes up on, on knowing your numbers backwards and forwards. Like, what does it cost uh, for a keg to make a keg where it's the, the keg collar, the, the label? Uh, the actual keg itself, the the amount of kombucha you're putting in, what does that cost to make, and what can you charge for it without gouging your customer too much? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so that those are numbers that you got to know backwards okay. and forwards. Yeah. So if that is not your cup of tea, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> your cup of kombucha, mm -hmm. yeah, um, nice thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of systems processes have you put in place to help you through that? aspect mm -hmm. that is just not native to you. Excel has been our friend, <laughs> closer than some of my relationships <laughs> with people. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we started out uh, at the beginning of this and said, hey, this is going to be a lot to track for a three-man group here. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's sit down and get all of the numbers, all the data we can before we dive in. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got a lot of great data uh, from the previous owners of like what it costs for their bottles, their caps, their keg, and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and put it into a spreadsheet that adapts. Uh, so, like, we can implement how many sales we got this month, and we can figure out if we're in the, the red or the black, like that. Right. Yep. Nice. So okay. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is cool. That, that is, is cool. huge. And I think that's great wisdom. Yeah. That's, that's, it's even better. It's even um, better that you've been able to reach out to the business owners that are in your life mm -hmm. to say, hey, you know, because there is some things that cross over, cross lines, mm -hmm. even, even, you know, even in different industries. Oh, yeah. Like, the books of a business are a huge thing, mm -hmm. right? So it's the end of the day, it is numbers. It's just about the numbers. Mm -hmm. And every business has them, and every business needs to pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's just, that's great. So from that idea phase almost a year ago mm -hmm. of maybe we do this, there had to be at least one, if not multiple points, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, along this journey right. that you were like, this is a deal breaker. Yeah. We're not moving forward, or we've already taken the jump, we've taken the risk, we're sunk. Yeah. So <clears throat> tell us about one of those moments where you're just like, we didn't see the light of day. And now here you are going, okay, it wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, okay. It I'm, was a big deal. I'm coming out of one. Just Oh, yes. yeah. are you? Yeah, All right, bring it. Okay. So what the crazy thing about Blackberry Mint and Blueberry Sage is that they're very similar in color. Very okay. similar in color. Uh, and I had looked at, I smelt it, I tasted it. I looked on our software that manages our, our, our brewery information. I was like, Oh my gosh, is this blackberry mint or blueberry sage? I can't tell. And this is after we'd already labeled everything and boxed everything. I, I was like, oh my goodness, did I do this wrong? Is there a whole other flavor in this? And looking back, I should have trusted myself because I was right the whole time. Yeah. And I'd t we'd taken off, I think, 10 boxes worth of labels uh, on bottles that we'd finished up yeah. because I didn't trust myself. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is wrong with me? I had I had to, I had to walk away like uh, I need I need a minute to to relax wow. here. Wow. So, yeah. But luckily, like I said, I've got a great support group where I just, I went to Lori. I said, Hey, I think I might have screwed up here. What should be a good course of action? And, and we had a plan together. If I was wrong, to fix it in right. ten minutes. So. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yep. The stakes are so much higher because. Oh my gosh. I was at a restaurant the other day, and you know I was with a friend, and mm -hmm. you know one orders like a Coke Zero in order. You know, Diet Dr. Pepper. And as they hand it to us, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, just shifting, going, nope, uh, well, I don't remember you, which one. You get? And right. so, you know, we're just like, well, I guess I'll drink yours. Or you, you, know? you drink mine. Right. Like, Man, the stakes are so much higher for you on stuff like that. <clears throat> no, yeah, not Man. only that, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, my goodness, I've wasted hundreds of dollars here on glass yes. and labels mm -hmm. and caps. 
because that's that's what the mind change from consumer buying something to a business owner. It's like, oh my goodness, every bit of this is money involved. Yeah, uh, yeah. And if you if you screw up, you're you're throwing away cash. You want to just light right. some hundred dollar bills on fire. Right, right. So it's a real feeling. It's a <laughs> real <laughs> feeling. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend of mine that his numbers at one point where he was lighting tens of thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. at a time. And I was like, how did you do that? Like, and it got to the point where it was close to seven figures. And I was like, holy smokes, dude, I don't think I could ever do that. And I think it is, but his, his growth curve, I'm sure started out lower, Mm -hmm. but it got to the point where he was able to endure that. And I was like, but you know, I mean, every, it doesn't matter how small or how big they are. They always hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter the type of, the amount of money. It matters in units, like whatever is relevant to you. Right. If 100 bucks right. is a large sum to you, that's then, a large sum, that, no, matter, right. no matter what it is. $10 is a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need lunch money. That's right. <laughs> right. So, on the, so on the flip side, mm-hmm. if that was, you know, one of the biggest struggles, hurdles, mm-hmm. um, what about unexpected victories? What's happened along the way that you're like, oh, man, I didn't even see that coming, but that was amazing. Okay. Uh, I've probably got two, and they all have to do with sales uh, okay. accounts we picked up. Go for it. Uh, so we're at Parkview uh, Hospital up in Fort Wayne. Mm-hmm. Huge, mm-hmm. huge hospital system. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we're in their cafeteria. Uh, and pre- pre-COVID, um, Crossroads was in there, uh, but they took it out just because, you know, they couldn't keep up with paying uh, people and stuff like that, so they didn't want to have un- un- uh, unnecessary uh Pay, payments of people, so like, okay, totally get it, no worries. Uh, then I went back in and asked, said, hey, would you want Crossroads kombucha in again, just because I know you guys loved it, and it was just, yeah, of course, we'd love to have it. So it started <laughs> with their, with their physical um, uh, surgeons, uh, and they they loved it so much that they had it in their uh, lounge, uh, and then I was like, okay, you guys are hogging it all. We got to have it for, <laughs> for the for the average Joe here. So they put it up in their cafeteria. Yeah, wow. uh, and they're buying a ton of kombucha from us, and we we love them as a partner. That's cool. Appreciate That's them awesome. so much. Yeah, they're, they've been really a big blessing to us. Yep. And then our second one uh, is one of my favorite breweries uh, in India is Hoosier Brewing uh, mm-hmm. in Greenwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I, I came in. And I got a chance to talk. It originally started out as me asking for help because uh, I was looking for one of their brewers. Or just somebody help me with distribution. So mm-hmm. I was like, "Would you? What do you think? Would you rather have someone do distribution for you, or just kind of picking his brain?" Uh, and he's a super nice guy. Uh, shout out to Brian Pine, really, mm-hmm. really awesome guy. Um, and he just walked me through it. Had a great conversation with him. He's like, "Yeah, I, I brought some for you to try if you'd like." Because they originally had their, they tried to do their own kombucha on tap. Uh, and just, it just didn't work out. Uh, right. So I thought this is a need we could we could help you guys with. So he tried it and he said. Really liked it. Really liked it. When you guys hit it in full production, talk talk back with me. Uh, so I did. I came back. I got lucky. He was there. Owner was there. It's a, I think four different people tried it, and they said, oh, my goodness, we love this. This is great. We'd love to have you on tap as a guest tap. So oh, that's like, awesome. Awesome, yeah. So we got, we're going to be a guest tap there. We have an event uh, with them this Saturday. Uh, so if you're looking for something fun to do, go to the uh, beer festival uh, at, at, at Greenwood um, Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, cool. So we're going to be there. We're going to be part of their VIP um, uh, th- event. There's like six or seven different breweries coming plus us. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be awesome. That's so, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. So those are two really big victories that we're really glad to have. That is really neat. That is cool. Mm-hmm. So what do you <clears throat> what do you see as the future of kombucha? Um, I see it uh, as something that you should be seeing in every bar, brewery, and restaurant across America. Okay, so uh, you really. might land in a Red Robin or a Chili's mm-hmm. or, yeah. Yep, there's there's stories of stuff starting to pop up where kombucha's starting to be a lot more popular. Okay. Uh, I believe the Seattle Seahawks, uh, I think, just put in a kombucha uh, on tap in their uh, facility. I might be wrong about that one, but okay. I, we went to uh, Kombucha Con. Uh, okay, I love it. Go right ahead. I love it. Like no one was dressing up as Scobies or anything. It was just a great meeting up of of brewers. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I first time I've been to California. Meeting of the minds. That's right. That's right. Uh, So we got a chance to meet up with a bunch of people who had already been down that road Mm -hmm. uh, of growing from from small to medium to big. That's awesome. Uh, Yeah. And, and meeting up with them. So I'm really seeing a big future in this. Did it give you a better insight of where, where it could go? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's There's awesome. so much knowledge 
there that was, that was at, at our fingertips to graph. Mm-hmm. There was right. companies there that be- dealt with uh, draft system management, <coughs> uh, kombucha starter management, uh, just different hurdles and challenges that people have already gone through and are teaching classes about it. Really? So, yeah, I can't beat that. Um, and then, so in terms of just numbers, so like soda is just per perspective, it's like a $400 billion industry. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right, right, yeah. I yeah, didn't know that. crazy. Kombucha is right now at 1.9 billion. Yeah, so oh, wow. it, it's on, it's on the come up a little bit. Yeah. Obviously not as close as soda, right. uh, but that's not what it's meant to be. Right, right. It's it's not meant to be that that sugary drink. It's it's meant to be a, like a nice healthy, mm-hmm. uh, like like a different, like an, almost an alt to soda. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right. like, if the way I see it is like there was the big seltzer boom. Mm-hmm. You know, where like everyone was, you got to have a white claw, you got to have a right. da, da, whatever. Right. Right. Uh, I'm thinking that's going to be kombucha next. I'm thinking okay. there's, there's going to be two versions of it. There's going to be like the non-alcoholic that you'd use to like work out or like, or like have some like a healthy drink. And then there'll be the almost beer or, or seltzer side. So there's a company uh, called June Shine that's super popular that is a honey kombucha uh, alcoholic beverage. It's got a huge infusion of capital. Uh, hmm. like, I think like 20 or 30 million. Oh wow! Um, wow! Yeah, it's super popular. And they do like they have a really cool system. They have a subscription program, so you can buy their kombucha. And it can be sent to your door. You can pick when, like, it can be monthly, uh, biweekly, uh, just fun stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's they've got yeah, a really, cool. We're kind of we're kind of copying their distribution strategy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because if you have, I mean, you know, a loyal customer is way better to have <coughs> than picking up a new customer. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so having someone who's not even think about it, getting it dropped off biweekly or monthly right. or whatever. Because you guys do door to door delivery, we do. right? We do do door to door delivery. And absolutely. how far is that? Just so since we're on the topic, how mm-hmm. far do you go out for thirty that? miles? Thirty miles. Okay. Yep. Oh, so you won't deliver to Texas, sir? I might make make an exception if like <coughs> like Elon Musk wants, wants wants some kombucha. I might drive down. Okay, you might, yeah. <laughs> uh, Elon, hit me up if you want some kombucha, craft kombucha. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so just kind of recapping, you're the you're the head brewer. Mm-hmm. You're you're the guy not just managing the Excel, mm-hmm, but right. you're managing the metrics of the pH balance and all these you know different things of yep. you know the fermentation process. Um, you're the sales guy. I do sales. I'm a sales guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love doing sales. You do the deliveries. I do the deliveries. That's right. The bottling with your sister. Bottling with sister and Barry. Barry is the best bottler. Is I've he? ever seen, yeah. Okay. And my limited uh, interaction with bottling glass bottles out of four head fillers, he is the best. <laughs> he's okay. the best. So, Fair enough. Yeah. yeah okay. He's the goat, as some might say. <laughs> the goat. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. So what what's next for Crossroads Brewery? Uh, Crossroads. Or Crossroads com- Kombucha, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Sorry. Uh, no, no biggie. Um, next steps for us is that we really want to dig into the local scene. Mm-hmm. Um, I Personally, for me, I love local beer. So I, I would love to be on tap. And I think that starting with Hoosier, I think that if we can see some success there, mm-hmm. uh, I can take that to, to other breweries and say, hey, Hoosier's doing a great job. They love their kombucha. Uh, and now they have something that's not water to yeah. drink. And so you can have that on tap as well. Um, I think that that'll be next steps. Trying to get into Indianapolis. Uh, we're at North Mass Boulder. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. It's a bouldering gym uh, past North Mass. Uh, you know where Center Point Brewery is? It's yeah. uh, yep, yeah. right by there. It's gotcha. huge. Really, it's awesome. Cool. Yep. They have a uh, they're they're they have it's called Top Out Cafe. It's really starting to blow up. Mm-hmm. It's like it has a separate account from Nor- North Mass. So like North Mass Boulder has an account. Top Out Cafe has an account, uh, and it's a workspace that people come in and work, and they can get a bunch of great stuff. They can get beer on tap, kombucha on tap, mm-hmm. uh, kombucha in cans, a lot of stuff you don't see at normal bars. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and we're on tap there. So. That's cool. awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep. So <laughs> I feel like you have a, a hill to climb. Yeah. Because Indiana is all about Diet Coke and sweet tea. Yep, absolutely. So how do you, do, how do do you f- approach that with somebody who is like, I've drank sweet tea and Diet Coke for 40 years of my adult life. Mm-hmm. You should try kombucha. Personal stories. Okay. We have personal stories from friends where they've had that same exact stance. I've I've drank coffee. I've drank uh, Coke all my life. Right. Thanks. I'm not going to try it. We had uh, Gary Robinson. Gary yeah. Robinson uh-huh. Running yeah. for school board. 
Running for school board. So <laughs> yeah, that's school right. board. He is. Yeah. yeah. He, every time we talk, he's like, "Help me get votes. Help me get votes." Yeah. So go G Rob. Go G Rob. Yeah. Uh, he replaced uh, a soda a day with uh, a kombucha a day because the correct serving is about eight ounces. That's where you get a lot of the health benefits. Okay. Uh, and his he's had a really good turnaround for his for his health. Really. Uh, he's uh, gone on a really good diet. And he's had a kombucha and he's dropped like thirty pounds. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, Matt Brooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. Is, he is now working at Brew Logic as head of sales. Right. Um, and they have kombucha on tap. Our kombucha, obviously. Right. Uh, and uh-huh. uh, anything, the only thing he's added or changed about his diet is kombucha, and his cholesterol has has dropped a ton. Really. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's it's not a bunch of bull crap I'm shooting at you. It's it's yeah. kombucha is the real deal. And he's a pretty healthy guy doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. there, uh, triathlons, right? Uh, I right? believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I feel like it, yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, he's yeah. I. Wow, that's wow. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, somebody who's already leading a healthier lifestyle mm-hmm. ends and up then, even healthier. Yep. That's, yeah. That's a good testimony. Yep. We, have, right. we have good, we have a lot of really good sales numbers, uh, a lot of good positive personal stories from people uh, that just want to see kombucha more popular. Mm-hmm. I think that has a, a, a lot of a gravitas to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just especially when you go to local places like local health food shops. Oh, they love it. They eat it up. Because, I mean, huh. it's, it's connecting with the community. I mean, who yeah. who don't want to do that? Right. right, right, right. All right, so you just convinced somebody. I mean, we've got I, like I, 30 million people listening to this podcast, <laughs> I think. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Man, you and Joey Rogan must be hanging out. We, yeah, we are. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, yeah, he's on the – no, he's not the next interview. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's more like 30 people maybe. I don't okay. know, somewhere between 30 and 30 million. It's um, somewhere in the between – and yeah. you've just convinced them all to, you know, to take kombucha for a try. spin. Gosh dang, I sure hope so. How do we get a hold of uh, of Crossroads Kombucha? Okay. Uh, there's basically a couple ways you can do it. You can go online and check and see if you're the 30-mile radius. If you are, hot diggity dog, yeah. go get yourself some. Mm-hmm. Or yourself a 12-pack, uh, and you can get it uh, either at brewery delivery, uh, or sorry, brewery pickup, or at home delivery. Uh, right. if you, I'll tell you what, if you come to the brewery, I'll give you a little bit of a tour as well. So I'm well, kind of thinking we should have done the we, podcast there anyway. That would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have, that, hey, episode that part two of this. There you there go. You go. Uh, we'll be at the brewery. We'll follow up with you. That's right. Uh, yeah, so you can do it that way. And then we're at a few different businesses uh, that I've, I've talked about a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 1823 Bakehouse uh, in Franklin. Uh, there is Field to Fork in Franklin. Uh, the 1823 Bakehouse is the gluten-free coffee shop. <laughs> um, they have a really like almost like a cult following. People will come from all over to get gluten-free stuff. Hmm. Oh, really? The cool story about them, uh, they were – so the original owner was selling, uh, and they had a few different uh, callers wanting to, wanting to buy it. But the only stipulation was you can't change the gluten-free aspect. you got to have it or else I'm not selling it to you. Right. Uh, and this couple came up, uh, and they loved it, and they bought it, and they kept the gluten-free going, and it's been going ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so – awesome for them then field the fork is really great um they are a locally sourced butch- butcher shop <coughs> they focus on a lot of really great meats and a lot of great indiana stuff so a lot of the a lot of their products are sourced locally from indiana okay if they can't get it they'll go like kentucky or whatever but it's really good uh and then we're also at apple works so oh, yeah. yeah down the trafalgar mm-hmm Yep. Really? Very if cool. you're going to pick up, I'll tell you what, Christmas time, we have a tradition for our families. We all, a day after Thanksgiving, we'll always go and get a tree. Yep. Not quite as big as Clark Griswold's tree. <laughs> no. Uh, but close pretty, second. Pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but we're there as well. Uh, so apple season is right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're coming out with a new kombucha called Apple Plus Spice. Really? And we're working with Sarah Brown, owner of Apple Works, to pick out the combination of apples we should use. Dude, oh, that's cool. so cool. Yeah. Super so cool. excited. All right, so what's the website? Uh, crossroadskombucha.com. Okay. Uh, check us out online. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. A lot of updates uh, going out. If you're listening from Fort Wayne, we are coming to you with brewery drop or uh, kombucha drop off. We're doing it. It's happening. Cool. It's That's happening, awesome. y'all. That's wow. Awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's super exciting. I can't wait for part two. Yes. <laughs> Me either. I'm excited. This I is fun. Go, I'm going to go try some of this stuff. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't tried it yet. Hey, absolutely. Come so, on down. I'm coming. All right. Well, Sam, well, thank you, dude. Yes. Thank yeah. you for spending time with us and giving us some insight into your world. That is, it, You've got a lot going on and super excited for you. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, guys. This has been awesome. First podcast, by the way. Yeah? I've ever done. Yeah. Hey, first business. 
first business first podcast oh yeah Who, what's next man i don't know <laughs> you're just know. knocking them out <laughs> there's a lot of firsts for this old boy <laughs> that's right that's right oh man well thank you again and um yeah you guys go uh, check out yeah some crossroads kombucha sounds That'd good sweet absolutely sweet. all right we'll be back with you here in just a moment Jason, this this podcast was wonderful. I really appreciate that Sam was able to come and visit us today because I tell you, I was I would love to be in his shoes at that age to have the opportunity to run a business. I mean, he's going to learn so much more totally than I have. I mean, at my age, because it just took me a little longer. I mean, now, don't get me wrong. KFC guy kicked it out at like 55, 60 <laughs> I'm I'm ahead of him, right? But Sam is so far ahead of me, which is super exciting. I'm excited for him. Yeah. And I mean, I'm excited for the great people that he, I mean, he gave a shout out to so many great people that are around him. Right. It's great to see that network of people, business leaders that are around him that are empowering him. Right. Um, you know, I, as leaders, I, I oftentimes reflect on the fact that there's so many great people that we've met at this podcast mm -hmm. and so many great people that I know that are around me that it's just, I'm a very appreciative of that. Right. And I love to be able to support others the same way that I have felt like people have supported me. Right. So to see that even come in with Sam and the people that are around him is just, it's exciting. Yeah. And it's great leadership. Right. And I love that he recognizes the support system that he has. Yes. And that, and not just knowing that, you know, hey, these people got my back and, mm -hmm. you know, I can do it, you know. Right. Um, but he is... He's he's willing to learn. Yes, you know. I mean, for all of you, for all of you people out there who knock the younger generations of you know, oh, they're entitled and arrogant. Right. No, <clears throat> Sam is proof that there are there are some hungry, humble kids out here. That young, are, yeah, well, yeah, not kids, young people. You right. know, <laughs> kids. Right. I mean, I mean, he's the same age as my son. But, right. You know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, he he's he's willing to ask the hard questions yep. of. How did you do it? Teach me. Show me. Yep. How, what are the failures I need to watch out for, steer clear of? And, right. You know, he's, like you said, he's, he's making his own, but, right. you know, he's and avoiding I mean, others. I mean, he's not, he's not, he's going to have problems, right? I well, mean, that's every, business. Everybody does, right? <laughs> but he is yeah. so, like you said, he's so willing to learn. He's so um, trying to be, stay ahead of the curve a little bit if he can. Right. By, by trying to learn from those that are around him. It's just, and you know the fact that he went to a conference where there was other people who are have mastered this art that yeah. he is doing, and he's in there tugging and asking for questions and asking mm -hmm. for help, and and people are giving it to him. I mean, I just had somebody this week come and talk to me. I was talking with them about you know, oftentimes are the people that we're competing against with that are in similar businesses are oftentimes the people that we also need to lock arms with because at yeah. some level. They're also the people that we can work with together and learn from each other. And, you know, and if yeah. they're not scared of, I mean, there's a scared mentality out there for some mm -hmm. business owners that yeah. are just like, hey, if I give this information to you, then I might lose some of my business or, you know, right. like that. And that's like, which is just such a sad thought process to go yeah. down. Um, but for those that are willing to lead and help other people grow and just empower others, like it is mm -hmm. just, it, it, it comes around full turn because then oftentimes like Sam sat here today and went, well, I really appreciate all. I mean, he listed so many people. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But all, I don't know how they've impacted him, but they've all been impactful to him right. for his journey. Yeah. And we assume a level of competition with others. Yep. And that causes <clears throat> to, you know, subconsciously inadvertently put up walls Right. That that restrict our relationships. That right. And I, I think he is proof that people are out there, even in the same industry, in the same field, mm -hmm. who want to see him succeed. Right. Hundred percent. Right. And you know, so how much is that true for us as well? Right. You know, whatever industry we're in. Right. You know, that the people that we see as opposed or competitors might actually be our biggest supporters. Right. If we That's gave it so a chance. True. And it's not, you know, it's on our side. Right. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, and that just goes right back to the heart of leading and serving. Right. You know, Which, fighting for the highest good of others, even if you're after kind of the same thing. Right. Let's go after it together. Like, there's enough for everybody. I mean, I there had is. so many good coaches tell me that. You know what? You know, there's enough for everybody right. here. It's not. It's not a. It's not a scarce mentality where there's only one piece of the, piece of the pie left, and we both are going after it. There's, right. No. I mean, kombucha may never be a four hundred billion dollar industry like sodas. Right. But at one point nine, there's plenty of pie out there for everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> you like, know. Yeah. I mean, and it, more than likely, you're not trying to make. Uh, that 400 billion, you know, like he's probably not shooting for 400 billion. He doesn't want, I don't know that you want the complete, uh, well, even in the soda. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know that you would even want the whole pie. Like there's not <laughs> like, how are you going to do that? Right. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So, but yeah, I just, you know, once again, I so excited for him. Yeah. So excited for, um, Lori and Barry and, and what they're doing down there in Franklin and, um, obviously, if you get an opportunity to go down there and see their shop, go for it. And, Absolutely. Uh, go down and get some some yeah. taste testers, for sure. Yeah, so their website is crossroadskombucha.com. Mm-hmm. And um, you can find them on the socials, like Sam mentioned as well. Yeah. Put those links in the show notes. And, and the and fact stuff. that they have delivery, too. Like, order your stuff. Have it sent yeah. to your house if you can't make it. Yeah, and if you live outside of 30 miles, maybe it's worth moving in. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, so, well, shout out to to Barry and Lori mm-hmm. and uh, Sam and Crossroads Kombucha. Yeah, you guys are great. Thank oh, you for. Oh, I, I did yeah. want to give one shout out. We had a, um, uh, somebody write in a message. Um, oh yeah, that that's right. W- that we got um, from a local listener, and just want yeah. to tell him uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sending your note. Great we great really appreciate it. And. I got to tell you that encouragement that day really went a long way for me. So yeah, that's uh, right. That's another real estate investor. And so I, it kind of hit home for me. Yeah. So moral of the story, if you're going to send us an email, <coughs> send it on Monday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we always appreciate your feedback and Absolutely. even, even the, um, positive reviews and stuff like that. We mm-hmm. always appreciate that too. And, yeah. And if you don't have something positive, say shoot us an email too. We, I'm, we're, we want to learn. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So thanks again for listening. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Sounds good. Take care.